Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. This is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to be building a build using Ruby on Rails as the backend. So I'm going to create in a backend with a ba basic notes app with authentication. And then we're going to deploy that app and then we're going to build a front end application uh, using uh, React. Okay, I've done this once before, but we did it with um, Vue as a front end. Now we're going to be doing it with React as the front end. Okie dokie. So let's see here. First thing I want to do is create a new Rails app. Or actually, what I should do is create a make der notes. Uh, we'll call it Rails React Notes folder. And then what I should do is open up my VS Code that folder. So there we go. Good. And then in this folder, we will have our two projects. So first, what I'll do is I'm going to create the Rails project, which is going to be backend. So Rails new, that's the command for making a new Rails project. I'm going to add a handful of flags. One, I plan on using Postgres as the database. So PostgreSQL. And then two, I plan on using um, not basically this is just gonna be an API so I'm not gonna use any kind of views or templating so I really don't want all that templating stuff that Ruby on Rails was scaffold because I'm not gonna use it so to save myself some time I'm gonna use the API flag okay so technically if this all goes well I should already come out of the gate with the configurations for Postgres and I should have none of the extra stuff just the stuff I need for an API so let's uh, do that and I actually need to put a name for the project. So let's do that. Let's call that backend. So there you go, Rails new backend and then all the flags. So let's give that a shot. There it goes. So see it's it's scaffolding everything. Nope, oh, need my password. Been a while since I've done Rails. And setting everything up, setting everything up. Now all that looks pretty good so far. And there it goes. It's, that was done, and it was done quickly because I did I did the API flag. So let's just double check. Okay, so if I were to go to app, see in views, views is for the most part empty because it's not going to be expecting for me to build much in the way of views. Now let's go to the database. See the Postgres settings are in there. Nope, that's actually going to be in config config database.yaml and yes yeah, it's configured for Postgres okay so that saves me some time uh, later um, well while I'm here in the terminal I might as well scaffold my react project for later okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use my um, react actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the react basic I'm just gonna keep it simple so I'm gonna use mpx create react basic and we're just going to call this front end, and we'll come back to that later. Keep it simple, um, because I want to show you guys stuff. So I don't want to use my templates to kind of do a lot that way, where I, you know, skip a lot of steps because it saves me time when I'm doing things that I want to do. Okay. Cool. Okay, so that's there for later. Okay, so we'll come back to that for now. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to CD into the Rails the backend folder. And I want to make sure I configure my database. So let me go back to config. Oh, actually, I already have the database YAML open over here. So by default, Postgres, that all looks good to me. Uh, development. <coughs> okay. Backend database, username. Okay, backend production. That really doesn't matter per se. <coughs> but I do know that my username isn't backend. So I'm going to call it username, password, test. Database, well, the database name is already there. And we get rid of a database password. Mm. Back in database password. Think about that. Well, that's fine for now. 
we will change that later and then I want to keep that for development as well so I'm going to copy these two over to my test database settings and over to development settings now I don't see host and should I add it? Do I need to add it? Yeah, if you run the server engine port. Okay, I guess it looks like it might be defaulting to 5432, which is where my Postgres should be running. So let me just double check. So I'm gonna go into my Postgres console by typing in PSQL. And then I'm gonna type in, I think it's, if I remember right, it's backslash con info. Yep, there we go. So yep, it's running on port 5432. So in that case, we are good. Okay, clear the terminal. Now that the terminal is clear, um, cool. Now, what I want to do is create the database to make sure that the database is connected. So I'm going to type it in Rails DB create, and that should create the database. And it'll succeed if the right data is inside this file. It'll fail if it's not. Okay, so let's read the output. That doesn't, look, that doesn't look like a successful run. Couldn't authenticate backend development database. Please check your configuration. Rails aborted. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Couldn't create backend development database. Please check your configuration file. Rails aborted. <coughs> okay, so let me go to my PSQL. Um, well, I'm pretty sure I have a user called test3, so I'll just change it to test3. But if actually I had to show you, so in that case, if you need to create a new, a new user, it would be like create, see if I remember right, it's just like create user, we'll say test5. Uh, with super user password test5 and that if I remember right that should be the right command or oh, no, I think it needs to be single quotes is the issue There we go. Okay, so we create create user. It's called test five with super user that gives them super user privileges, which means they can edit all the databases, which I really don't care for local purposes um, because these are just all local development databases with dummy data. And the password is test five. Okay, so that's the command again. Semicolon single quotes on test. So let's go here. Let me update this to test five. Test five. That's five, that's five, that's five, that's five. Now let's try that again. Okay, your authentication failed. Three user test five, couldn't create backend development database. Connection rails boarded, connection peer authentication failed for test five. Okay, everything does want me to, con to put in the extra details of host and port. So let me just do that. Host, localhost, port 5432. Let me add those. To these. Let's try that again. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so see there, it successfully created the database. Okay, so you need to put all the information. Okay, so that works for me. 
Okay, and I'm gonna save that. Well, it's already automatically saves. Cool, so the database is created, so we're connected. Okay, wonderful. Okay, that's all fine and good. Then other thing I wanna test out while I am here, just, just run the server real quick, make sure that's running fine. So to do that, I'm gonna do Rails server. Okay, and that looks to be running on port 3000. So let's go to a new tab, localhost 3000. And there we go, new Rails app. Very good. Okay. So I'm gonna kill the server, control C. Now a couple of things, this is probably not a bad habit to do, is just run a bundle install. Now if you're not familiar with what bundle install does, if this is your first time using Rails, a lot of the libraries that it's using, you may not have installed. Everything it needs out of the box is in this file called gem file. Okay, so this lists all like, see if he has the Postgres, Puma, these are the things that it needs at the moment. So what you can do is you do bundle install and it'll install anything that's not already installed. I already have everything installed, so it's pretty quick. But you do that, then you should be good to go. So the gem files are kind of like package.json in JavaScript programs, um, just to give you some context. The only difference is that unlike package.json where they're automatically generated for you, like you can install gems in Ruby and you can just use them. Problem is like you download someone else some template or some other's code, you don't know which gems you need in case you're missing some. So really you, you hand write these gem files. Okay, so you put the source, you always have to put the source up here at minimum. This is not necessarily necessary. And then that's not necessarily, I don't think necessary either, but that's generally gonna be there anyways. Not a bad thing to put. And if you're wondering what Ruby version you're running, you can always just type in Ruby dash V. So I'm running 2.70. If you're wondering what uh, Rails version you have, you can just type in Rails dash V. And if you're wondering what bundler version you're running, or if you have bundler, you should be able to type in, I think it's always, I think it's gonna be bundle dash V. Yep. Okay. Bundle doesn't come automatically with Rails. You would have to install it by doing gem install bundler. Okay. But then you can run bundle and all that stuff. Also, you, know, you might notice that if you don't have yarn installed, you might have ran into some errors when scaffolding your project. You can either install Yarn, so that way that problem goes away, or when you create a new project, you can do Rails, New, and then you just add the flag Skip Yarn, and that'll skip Yarn and use NPM instead, just, just so you know. Okay, cool, so that's uh, an overview. And the next video we'll do is we'll start building out the authentication, and then after that we will build the API, test it out, deploy it, and then we'll get onto that React front end. Okay, the cool thing about Rails is that once you kind of know how to use the tools, you can do stuff pretty quick here. Okay, you don't have to spend too much time doing a lot of gritty work. As much as I do kind of really enjoy the workflow of like Express and just kind of setting everything up, this definitely has its advantages as well, as far as just how quickly you can spin things up.